how to control a z-axis machine in light burn and how to use the z-offset welcome to the middle room workshop I recently started some testing on the new Nege Max 4, which I'm going to review soon, and I had to set up the Z-axis control. Unfortunately, I haven't found a comprehensive resource explaining how to work with it, nor it is explained properly on the Nege documentation. Therefore, I have decided to make a quick video for you guys to follow. First up, let's add and connect our machine. So, select our machine and let's wait for it to home uh, once the machine is uh, connected you will head up to the device settings and here uh, to the top right corner you will see the Z control box and you will want to toggle on the enable Z axis and optimize Z move okay now um, if you notice that your machine moves in the opposite direction, you can toggle on or off the reverse Z direction. The other thing here is the relative Z moves only. Uh, when working in absolute coordinate systems, also for the Z axis, and so keeping this relative Z move uh, untoggled, is that, uh, let me show you, click OK, go over to the cuts and layer, you have um, the ability to input your material thickness over here. Um, and so this is a cool thing, and I believe that's something that you want to do. Once you're done with that, we can go right away and test it out. You saw that the machine has already homed, uh, but we can use the uh, move tab here and to jog it. So let me first jog it to a visible position. And now you can set up your uh, increment distance. Uh, be mindful on the actual uh, maximum travel for your particular machine. Now, the, the Nege Max 4 offers a 45 millimeters travel, which I have tested and is actually 46. And so with that, you can use this two button here to basically jog up and down on the Z axis all right so once that is done and we are connected it is time for us to set up physically the laser module so what we want to do is to have a non-reference position relative to your uh, cutting bed so uh, make sure here to use your typical cutting bed that you're going to use with this machine so uh, that could be your honeycomb or the Atom stock maker F3 or your blades or whatever the cutting or the base it's meant to be. Uh, that's how you will need to uh, do that. Now, once the machine uh, is on a favorable position for you to perform measurements, you are going to lower down the laser module as much as you can. However, before to do that, you are going to rise up manually the laser mod by loosening the clamp so that you avoid the laser module from crashing onto your bed. So I'm going to do that right away. Okay, now this is the highest point it can be. Now here, once again, with the, on the move tab, we can jog down. Now, as I said, this machine offers a 45 millimeters of travel. However, if you don't know, you can go by increment, so you can go by 10. For example, so you can jog down and again and again and look at the z-axis movement, okay? You want to stop when you hear the axis rattling. So that means that the axis have reached the physical limitation. And so I'll go down again. And now I'm going to just put five still and one millimeter and you hear the machine rattling just a little bit you don't want to force it so now we are sure to be on the lowest possible position that the z-axis can move now what i suggest you to do is to set up 
the lowest point of your laser module such that it cannot crash with your laser bed. Obviously, in doing so, be mindful also of the uh, focus distance. Now, I have created a very simple uh, drawing here, okay? Um, so that I can explain better what I mean. So you want to set up a distance, let it be a known distance uh, that would be favorable, okay? A distance from your honeycomb or your cutting bed. And the focus height, which in this laser module I measured is 23 millimeters, happen to be inside of your cutting bed. That's exactly what you want, which means that you can move uh, and you can handle any material. Plus the uh, laser head, the laser module will be clear from the bed at all time. And unless there is no material, it cannot crash with it. So let's do that right away. I found that using a known uh, clearance plate is very helpful. So I found this uh, 20 millimeters aluminum profile, which happens to work perfectly fine for the purpose. Okay, so I'm going to lower it down and now I'm going to tighten this all the way. And so now I know that in the lowest point, the laser module will be 20 millimeters off the cutting bed, this particular bed. Now we are going to move uh, to home actually, so to move to the maximum uh, position. Okay, so let me home for that, would be the simplest thing to do. Let me jog back in view. Now what we want to do is to take our measuring our ruler or caliper, whatever you fancy, and to measure the distance from the home position to your, uh, to your bed. And so let's take the ruler. So 66 millimeter is my height, perfect. So now that these two values are known, that's how it's going to work. So what happened here now is that from the bed, I got a 66 millimeters, which is my homing height for the Z axis, okay? So now other two measurements that comes into play are the material thickness, which obviously is the thickness of your sheet or object that you put underneath, and the Z offset. Now the Z offset, is basically going to be how far in or out relative you, to your uh, material surface you want to be. So when you're cutting thicker material, you will want your focal point to be inside, okay? So you will want to sink the z-axis inside. Um, when you engrave, ideally you will want it to be onto the surface, okay? And if you want to engrave a wider line with a sing single pass, you can basically give a negative offset, which will move the laser head up. Now let's load some material. Now for this, I'm going to place this uh, three millimeter of uh, play wood. And so in light burn, I'm going to input three millimeters. Okay, so this is why I said it is very handy because now you can input the three millimeters here. Now, you need to know how far down the laser module has to move. Let me get back my pictorial here. Um, and so here I've arranged something. So what happened is from the homing position, you are going to move the uh, laser module down to a position where the focal point is actually touching the bat. Okay. Then you will want to move back up by the material thickness, which is what we are providing here. And finally, you will want to move up or down by the Z offset. So that is dependent on whether you are engraving, cutting, and whether your engraving uh, require a thicker line or not. So this is the, uh, the cool thing uh, here. So the amount of movement for the Z axis will be equal to the maximum height, okay? which we just measured, 66 millimeters, 
minus the focus height for our particular laser module, which is 23 millimeters. So now this is the distance. So that's basically 43 millimeters. 43 millimeters is the distance that the laser module must go down in order to be in focus onto your uh, cutting bed, onto your honeycomb, for example. Uh, then you will want to deduct the material thickness, which means it's going up by the material thickness, in this case, three millimeters. And then uh, since we are going to cut, you will want to go down inside of the material. And so I'm adding, in this case, the one millimeter of offset that I want. And so that's what I'm doing here. Now, in live burn, uh, it can be implemented, but I will show you a better workflow in a while. Now, we said this is our material thickness, which is okay. Then every layer will have a something called the Z offset, as I said. Now, here is where you will want to input the Z offset. However, there is an initial movement, which is our 43 millimeters to be carried out. And so what you will want to do here is to input 43 millimeters. So this is the minimum that the laser head has to go down on the Z-axis. And then if you want to go with positive offset, it means if you want to go inside of the material with your focal point, uh, you will add that distance on top. So 43 plus one in this case is 44. And so that's the way you are going about it. Now, here you will need to do it for every single layer. And so here, for example, uh, I would like the line to be thicker. And so what I'm going to do is 43 minus one in this case, so it's 42. And the sub layer, I want to be with zero. And so I'm simply going to leave it with 43 millimeters. Okay, so this is going to work out your job. And so now I'm going to show you how this is going to cut. Okay, so I'm going to uh, make a simple circle here. Okay, let's move it on to the black layer. Uh, no, the black layer, uh, we say we are going inside by, let's say 44.5. That's good for cutting. Let's click on OK. And my material is three millimeters. So uh, let me now frame. All right, so as you can see, we did our cutting and it cut perfectly fine. So now let's implement instead the way I uh, think it should work. And that is taking advantage of the user coordinate system. Uh, these are in G code, uh, the G G54, G55 uh, and so on. So this is the G code, and this is basically what is going to be sent to the machine when uh, we are clicking on start. So as you can see here, we have a bunch of parameters, metric, user coordinate system, and so on. Now the important one is the G54. Now G54 represent the uh, coordinate system that we are going to use, okay? So let me close this up. So this is sent every single time. Now here, we can see the parameters by typing dollar sign pound and clicking enter. We can see uh, these are all of the custom coordinate system that we have available, okay? And so everything here is zero, 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 zero. What we can do here, since our setup with this machine will not change, we will use the same bed uh, and we are not going to manually uh, shift the laser module relative to the z-axis, it's that we can actually settle our distance there. And so for this, we can use um, this snippet of code. So G10 L2P1, now X and Y we don't need, we can use Z, 
and in this case minus 43. I want to go down by minus 43. That was based on the calculation that I did earlier. That is 66 minus 23. So my maximum height minus the focal uh, height. Um, and so once I do that, click enter, and then I can verify again dollar sign pounds and you will see that now here we get the x y z parameter settled to minus 43 minus 43 because we are going down towards the bad okay so that's a negative uh, value there so uh, now what happened here is that I can go back into my layer and I can dismiss here the uh, offset I can only include the offset that I need. So in this case here, I want it to be a 1.5 millimeters offset to get inside of the material. And then here, I want it to be a minus one offset so that I can engrave a thicker line. And here instead, I had zero. So you see the beauty is most layers will be at zero offset. And so you don't have to touch that. You don't have to deal with that okay so now uh, this um, G code that we have sent to the machine will basically record this uh, user coordinate system to the EEPROM so that's the onboard memory on the main board of your machine so you don't have to deal with that okay uh, you will only want to change that when and if you are going to change your bed or you are going to uh, do something that will basically vary the distances, the vertical distances while you work. All right, so now with that done, okay, and once I'm ready, I can click on start. All right, and as you can see, it worked. Now, it is up to you whether you want to mess up with your uh, EEPROM settings with the G54 user coordinate system, or if you want to simply input the difference as a offset and then to add or detract your offset accordingly from there. Um, and yeah, so I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you have any comment, leave them in the comment section below. Uh, do not forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Ciao for now!